AHS Quiz Bowl. I was your host last year. I've uh, been the host of several PTO auctions as well. Uh, I haven't been paid for any of them, so uh, I'm either a nice guy, do them for free, or a bad host, and they're not going to pay for my material, so I don't know. I think that both of those things aren't accurate. But uh, So we're going to introduce the judges first. We have our fearless librarian, Miss Barb Fecto. We have Josie Miller. Uh, we have NHS co-faculty advisor, right? <laughs> Mr. Sam Stanchel. All right, at this time, we're going to introduce the teacher team. First, we have uh, my former student, Mr. Seth Stanchel from the wellness department. We have Ms. Megan Sudak from the business department. Mr. Alan Gibbs from Mathematics. And Ms. Donna Brewster from Science. All right, we're gonna introduce the student team. We'll go ladies first with Natalie Eberhardt. Then we have Arie Sofer. Jonathan Sofer. And Oliver Gibson. All right, so a little bit about how we're gonna do this. We have three rounds. The first round is a toss-up. That's where I'll say the question. Either team can ring in with their buzzers. We have actual buzzers this year, so that should take away from some of the borderline violence last year with the different buzzers, so that should be better. Uh, so I'll read the question. You, read, you, read, you buzz in when you know it, and then you have 10 seconds to answer, three seconds to answer, right, okay. And then we move on. Then we go to the other team, and then if nobody knows it, we just move on. The second round is a head-to-head, -head where you're gonna pick one representative to go head-to-head -head with the other team. I'll tell you the category, then you can pick your representative. Seniors, uh, this is for everybody in the audience that's a senior. If you feel you're qualified and you know that category, feel free to come up on the stage. You can talk to your teammates there. We want everybody to be included there. So if like, we mentioned something and it's Harry Potter trivia, not that we have that, but, and you are a Harry Potter master, you can come up and tell your classmates that I got this and then you can go head to head with the teachers, okay? So that's exciting everyone's uh, dream. <laughs> I said it was like it, like it was fun. Any, any, any That's enough. No. No. <laughs> you all have master's degrees. You should be able to beat the kids. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, Ms. Fecto said that's fine. A little, uh, little early for the complaining, but that's fine. <laughs> All right, so round three is every team for themselves. There's one buzzer that it's located centrally right there, and whoever buzzes it fastest can answer the question. So that's, I'm gonna kind of stand out of the way as not to get injured. I don't wanna get run over, okay? So I think that's the buzzer, right? And then, this is not going well. You, you hit that buzzer on the first round, yes. The third round is that one. You guys have to run to this buzzer. I'm guessing Mr. Stanchel might be the obvious choice to, <laughs> to make the run. Okay? That, would be my, that would be my call if I were making that decision. So we run over, you hit the buzzer, and then you get the question. We don't have to run, but I'm guessing they're probably going to run. right? You're gonna run in round three, right? So round one is very traditional. I read the question, you hit the buzzer that's at your table, and then you get three seconds to answer it. If you don't know the answer, but you buzzed in or it's wrong, the other team gets a chance at it. Is it 
Sure, yes, that's fine. Yes. <laughs> he'll, he'll hit the buzzer. All right, so does anyone have any questions? Round one is traditional. <laughs> Naked Eye looks closer to you guys, I have to say. <laughs> Just, Every I, time I don't know if I'd want that measurement. To get closer to that. All right, so if we don't have any questions, we'll get started. Round one is very traditional. I'm going to read the question. And then once you hear the question or you feel you know it, then you can hit your buzzer. You have three seconds to answer it. If you get it wrong, the other team gets a chance to, to get your points. All right, so here's question number one. Is 313 a prime number? Oh, we have a, yes. a, the answer is yes. 313 is a prime number. I guess my follow-up question is, what is a prime number? <laughs> Don't, no idea. So, uh, <laughs> All right, so question number two. Who was the first woman to be elected to the New York Senate when she won in 2000? We have an answer. Hillary Clinton is correct. All right. The RMS Olympic and HMHS Britannic were sister ships to which? The Titanic. Correct. The Titanic is correct. It, question number four, if 90% of X is 18, what is 50% of X? Ten. Students? Ten. 10 is correct. <laughs> Impressive. Number five, in 1513, who became the first European explorer to set eyes on the Pacific Ocean? Students? Ferdinand Magellan. Incorrect. Balboa. Correct. <laughs> Balboa is correct. That looks like the, uh, the staples. That's easy button, right? It's not that easy. Um, all right. Number six. According to NBA rules, how long does a player have after catching the ball to shoot a free throw. 10 seconds is correct. <laughs> yeah. I'm proud of you. Number seven. How many characters are allowed in a tweet? Students? Incorrect. 280 is correct. Used to be 140. Now it's 280. Number eight. Moving right along. Name the novel that was written in 1851 and had the opening line, Call Me Ishmael. Students. Moby Dick is correct. Nice job. Number nine. What is the most widely spoken language in Africa? <laughs> Students? Uh, Arabic. Arabic is correct. <laughs> you guys are trusting me that I'm saying the answers are correct. I could just be like, yes, yeah, that, that's correct. I, I'm not. Number 10, name at least two football teams that have never Name fo two football teams. Yeah, it's a scandal. If this were the MCAS, I'd have to let the state know that your phone went off, Miss Brewster. It'd be an investigation. All right. Name at least two football teams that had never made it to the Super Bowl. Teachers. Yeah. 
you have one of the two. <gasps> Students? That's a, that's a note. It's Cleveland Browns, Detroit Lions, Houston Texans, and Jacksonville Jaguars. So, yeah, they're not very good, those teams. <laughs> At least Houston hasn't been in the league all that long compared to the other teams. Yeah. I mean, Cleveland, Detroit, that's not good. Uh, number 11. What gland regulates metabolism in the human body? What gland regulates metabolism? Students? Thyroid is correct. Class of 2013, right? Yeah, very good. Uh, okay, number 12, Montvideo, if you're saying that right, is the capital city of what South American country? Yes? No. M-O-N-T-E, video. Oh, all right, yeah, I've never heard of that. country. Uruguay is correct. It's close. You look close. All right. <laughs> Number 13. Which member of One Direction was the first to leave? Students? Zane is correct. Yes. Well, you could hear the answer too. You could buzz in. <laughs> they, they get points for actually buzzing in when they hear the answer. Audience, while we appreciate you trying to make Jonathan look like a huge One Direction nerd, uh, please don't put answers out to the. I knew that. It was hard for me to not to yell out Zane, too. I mean, I have seen them twice in concert. They're very good. Once with Zane and once without. So, I, I, you know, you got the full experience. It was nice. They'll, they'll be back together someday. Very good. I feel like Ms. Fecta put that question in there just in case I had to go to the table. So I would get one question. I'd be like, oh, Zane! But no. All right. Number 14. According to physics, what are the four fundamental forces in nature? Students? What was it again? She said all four. All right, that's correct. Uh -oh. All right, number 15. How many paintings did Vincent van Gogh sell? during his lifetime? Teachers? Zero. Incorrect. Uh, that was a big shot. Yeah. No, that was a good shot. One. One is correct. <laughs> I mean, you had to know it was like either zero or one. It probably wasn't like 397, you know? <laughs> That's not good. All right, so, number 16. What is the official language of Greenland? All right, teachers? Incorrect. Students? Incorrect. It's Greenlandic. From, yeah, from this point on, I'm going to do all the questions in Greenlandic. So. <laughs> so, number 17. Diamonds are made up almost entirely. Students? That is correct. Yeah. 
well, it's good. You should be you should be proud of your students. How come he got it? <laughs> you were there too. Um, teams, I just want to remind you when you answer, use the mics. Our television Carbon. audience. Carbon. <laughs> wah, wah. Hello. That's sucking the fun out. Um, it all right. makes a noise. Oh, noisy talking, man. <laughs> Number 18. What positive number is 12 less than its own square? What positive number is 12 less than its own square? Four. Four is correct. <laughs> number 19. I'm sorry, Mr. Gibbs, what do you teach again? All right, seniors are up 10 to 6. I, uh, yeah, I feel like this question applies more to the teachers at this point, but number 19 is what does it mean to take an L? What does it mean to take an L? You take a loss, yes. To fail. And this is the final question in round one. Number 20 is what quarterback announced his retirement in 2016, just one month after winning the Super Bowl. Teachers? Peyton Manning. <laughs> not, not Papa John, no, he didn't win. So, yeah, teachers got that one. That's a clue that was needed. He's one of the greatest quarterbacks ever, and he gets reduced to pizza guy. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. poor Peyton. If I didn't hate him, I'd be mad. But so, yeah. All right, so now we're gonna do round two, which is head to head. We're gonna split into categories. I'll tell you what they are one at a time, and then you pick your representative to kind of go head to head. We're gonna move the chairs out in front, and then the teams can be behind the representative, right? Oh, okay. Any senior is allowed to volunteer as tribute for this section. And any teacher. Any student, any teacher, one representative, but they can confer? No, head to head, yeah. Yeah, it's just you and, just you and them. There we go. All right, the first category is sports. And any, any, all right, we have a volunteer for the, for the yeah, Mr. Stanchel's coming up. All right, we have Connor coming up for the seniors. This is intense. Yeah, this is uh, intimidating. All right, here we are. Question number one. Who is the only athlete ever to play in a Super Bowl and a World Series? Incorrect. It's Deion Sanders. Yeah, 50 percent. All right, number two. Where did the sport of curling originate? Teacher? Incorrect. Scotland is the answer. <laughs> I don't know if you could hear my air quotes around sport, but <laughs> they were there. They were there. Yeah. Number three. I can sit El Chapo for a second, but uh, <laughs> he wouldn't be in the sports category, I don't think. Uh, number three. El Clasico is the name given to football, soccer matches between which two teams? Correct. Real Madrid and FC Barcelona. Number four, which baseball team won the first World Series championship in 1903? Incorrect. The Cubs know. The Boston Americans. How did you not know that? 
That was, that's one of the easy ones. Uh, number five. How many times has England won the World Cup? Connor? Incorrect. One is correct. All right. Thank you very much. That's for that category. That was, uh, yeah. Out of five questions, one curling and two soccer. That's, that's, like that's what happens when the them. quiz bowl team is in charge of making up the sports. <laughs> okay. I'm like, oh, this is, yeah, they went all in on soccer. All right. Uh, the next category is history. He wasn't going to let that stop him, though. He was getting up. <laughs> All right, so we have Natalie. We do, we do need a representative. The empty chair. Al Gibbs doesn't know history, uh, but he's lived it. Yeah. <laughs> He was present at most of these events. So, so unfair advantage. All right. <laughs> All right I, don't, I don't want to scare you. Um, okay. So history. Number one. Which president was forced to flee the White House during a British attack in the War of 1812? Right. James Madison is correct. This is, yeah. Hey, Mr. Reardon, when somebody rings in, can you just hold the microphone to their face so that they can answer? I, I don't really like to share the microphone, but that's, <laughs> that's, I don't think that was in my contract, but that's fine, I can do that, so they can hear the answers. Question number two, where is Europe's oldest university located? Uh, like in England, man? Yeah? Uh, more specific. But where is that located? Yeah, downtown. <laughs> <laughs> Incorrect. Incorrect. Bologna, Italy. It's in Italy. Oxford's not in Italy. <laughs> Our next category is geography. <laughs> they moved it. There was a big fire. It was on the news. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Gibbs was in the inaugural class, first graduate. <laughs> All right, number three. <laughs> in what year did India become a republic? March of 1846. Incorrect. Very specific. <laughs> Very close, 1950. <laughs> All right, question number four. No, well, you weren't that close, though. She was only two years away. You were, like, in a different century. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, question four. Which country did Germany and the Soviet Union secretly agree to divide between themselves Poland is correct. Number five. And final one for history. This is kind of turning into a rout. Um, is how many South American countries are named after famous people? Three. Incorrect. <laughs> Well, at least one is, I mean, but no. Can you, can you be more specific? Can you be more specific? <laughs> Two. You had one of them, Bolivia and Colombia. All right, so that's it for history. Thank you very much. All right, well. 
Mr. Gibbs might be, might be back on the walk here. Uh, the next category is mathematics. All right, we have the two guests from the audience, Andrew and Miss Woodcock. They're gonna be doing the math section. Uh, if you need help, I can help you. I'm very good at math, as you can tell by my expertise in prime numbers. You know, I know what, yeah, so. It's true, I don't know what they add up to, but I do know those numbers. <laughs> so, math. If an object travels two feet per second, how many feet does it travel in one hour? <laughs> this is a family show. No. So it's There's pencil and paper on the tables if you need that. <laughs> it's traveling two feet per second. How many feet does it travel in one hour? I think you know on the count. Ms. Woodcock? That is correct. 7,200 feet. Well, you can get some paper, I think. Oh, all right. All right. I don't even know how to say this word. If, if there's only three more math questions that, this is a, yeah, they're not in the math section. We'll go with that. Yeah, so how many equal sides doesn't, that's incorrect. I, what was it again? Icosahedron. All right. How many equal sides does whatever that is have? I think it's supposed to be head to head, yeah. 20. <laughs> That's a tough one. All right. <laughs> what kind of function is f of x equals... Oh. <laughs> I, when I see letters and numbers together, I get like bad flashbacks to high school. <laughs> I was always in trouble. I, I didn't do so well in math. Do you want me to read this one for you, Erden? Yeah, because <laughs> like, I don't know if it's X or times. Uh, okay, you ready? It's like, that little, the X can be the times in math, right? It's a function. That's right. What's a function? Uh, function. What kind of function is F of X equals X to the third? Yeah, man! Is that right? That's right? It is correct, although I think slapping a student is probably... Uh... <laughs> but, but, that's, but the answer says something completely. It says... Oh, oh, it oh yeah, it was reading the <laughs> I kind of checked out when I saw the word math. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, question number four. What is 45 degrees in terms of pi? Yes, correct. That's correct. And the last math question, and I'll breathe a sigh of relief, is what is the largest three-digit prime number? Largest three-digit prime number. At this point, at this point, we're going to invoke the Google protocol. First one of you to find it on your phone gets it. What is the largest three-digit prime number? What is the largest three-digit prime number? This is who can cheat the best. 997. Woo! Surprisingly, the teachers can cheat better. Not what I would have guessed. <laughs> Uh-oh. 
That's, no, that's the last one. Now we have the science category. Is Bruce just coming up? How about the seniors? Anybody from the team or anybody in the audience feel strongly about science? All right, Oliver's taking one for the team here. A quick scan of these words, I've, I've relieved. I was afraid I was gonna go right in from math to science and not know how to say these words either, but I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Number one, what is the only internal organ in humans that is capable of regenerating lost tissue? All. Oliver? The liver is correct. It's from mythology, this liver grows back. To... Number two, what is the medical term for low blood sugar? It's Brewster. That is correct. <laughs> Number three, which bone is the longest bone in the human body? Ms. Brewster, femur is correct. A little rally by the teachers. Number four, which planet in our solar system has the largest gravitational pull? Teachers, Jupiter is correct. The rally, rally. And number five, the olfactory nerves affect which sense in the brain? Smell. Yes, correct. All right, teachers have a rally there. All right. Uh, so I think we need to move the chairs for round three, right? I can, I can do it. Yeah, the teachers are being docked a point. There was, people could hear the word smell in the audience before Ms. Brewster said it. I'm not gonna name names. He has long hair. <laughs> so uh, at this point we're gonna invite, oh, all the seniors on stage that want to participate in round three, this is every team for themselves. There's one buzzer, it's located here, and whoever hits the buzzer the fastest must answer for their team. So I'm gonna read the question, and then you can make a run for the buzzer. Again, any senior that wants to come up, come on up, because you guys might know something to help out your classmates. Trying to find a safe spot. I think I'm going to stand here so I don't get run over and run. All right, so this is round three. This is every team for themselves. That buzzer should be centrally located, and whoever hits the buzzer the fastest must answer for their team, okay? So you can't, you have to know the answer if you buzz, right? You can't then, you can't buzz and then go back to your team to confer. So you have to know the answer. You can't, you can't buzz and then go back for guidance. Yes, yeah, yeah, whoever buzzes has to answer. He can't come back, you have to tell him the answer and then he runs and buzzes. Yeah, yeah, you can't just run over him. Yeah. Any questions over here? All right, good.
You didn't, you didn't pick it up. It just, you, left, you left it like that. All right. So round three, this is it. We're going to have how many questions? 20 questions. So it's anybody's game at this point. Teachers, teachers are winning. I must, I must have zoned out for a few up there. But All right. So teachers are winning at this point, but there's 20 questions left. Question number one. Where is the world's largest active volcano located? Teachers? Hawaii. Hawaii is correct. Uh, <laughs> uh, question two. This, this story got a lot of st press at the time. Like it was a reason for national celebration, but uh, number two, in what year did Leonardo DiCaprio finally win an Oscar after being nominated six times? 2017. Incorrect. 2016. 2016 is correct. <laughs> the year our... Uh, yeah, so okay, you can come up, you can come up. That was like the year our long national nightmare ended. Like, <laughs> like we were all I didn't get a prize because he won. Like we were supposed to celebrate, he finally won an Oscar because his $150 million isn't enough. Yay. I'm so happy for him, so happy. <laughs> Number three, what is a flat image that can be displayed in three dimensions? Flat image. <laughs> Teachers? Hologram? Hologram is correct. <laughs> All right. Mr. Stanchel's lightning speed is coming into play here. Number four. In, ter in terms of social media, what does the phrase slide into your DMs mean? <laughs> Message someone in their direct messages. That's correct. Uh, the answer says <laughs> confidently and smoothly, too. So you can't be awkward. You, nobody wants an awkward slide into the DMs. It has to be, yeah. Well, they're trying to give you advice. Be confident, be smooth. Don't just slide in there. All right. So. Number five, which U.S. president appears on the $2 bill? Yeah, uh, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll say teachers on that one. John Adams. Incorrect. Oh, I did hear the correct name. Jefferson? Thomas Jefferson is correct. All right. Number six, <laughs> Mr. Gibbs knows his stacks of paper. <laughs> Number six, what is a meteor called when it reaches the Earth's surface? Students? Asteroid. Incorrect. Meteorite. Meteorite is correct. <laughs> you still are. All right, number seven, if Jane can run six miles in one hour, how far can she run in 15 minutes? Incorrect. 1.5 miles? 1.5 is correct. Number eight, you gotta watch the dissension in the ranks. Number eight, in the Harry Potter series, what is the name of Hagrid's pet dog? Fang, and Fluffy, yes, yes. <laughs> well, I love Harry Potter. <laughs> and Harry Potter in One Direction, now I feel included. Thank, thank you, thanks. All right. Number nine, 
what is the name of the movement that was founded on January 1st, two, 2018, by Hollywood celebrities in response to Weinstein Effect and hashtag Me Too? Yeah, what is the name of the movement that was founded on January 1st, 2018, by Hollywood celebrities in response to the Weinstein effect and hashtag Me Too? Judges? The judges are conferring. They're conferring. And I, I don't think there's like really set rules. <laughs> it's just more of a. Yeah. What's happening, man? <laughs> All right, students get it. The, uh, the answer was time's up. All right. Number 10. Which Australian actor died from an overdose while filming the document? Heath Ledger. Well, you, know, you had Australian. And All right. Number 11. Who is the all-time leading point scorer in NBA history? Don't all run at once. Teachers? Incorrect. Yeah. Come on, no. <laughs> Incorrect. Can we move on? Green at Dulce Bar. Correct. Yeah. It was Kareem Abdul Jabbar. All right. <laughs> Number 12. The Van Gogh Museum is located The Van Gogh Museum is located in what European capital city? Correct. And number 13. Which tennis player has won the most men's Grand Slam titles. Roger Federer. Roger Federer is correct. <laughs> <laughs> All right, close game. We have, yeah, this is, this is it, yeah. It is, yeah. Number 15, no, number 14, yeah, number 15. The great, oh yeah, correct, yeah. Well, 14, I got, I, I, I got distracted when I turned my head. Uh, number 14, which U.S. state did the first McDonald's open in? Yes, California. All right. Number 15, The Great Gatsby was written by F. Scott Fitzgerald in 1924. Name at least one other novel written by him. Poor F. Scott. I say students, yeah, students. 
Tender is the night is an answer. This side of paradise, the beautiful in the dam, last tycoon. It's this curious case of Benjamin Button, but that's a short story, not a novel, if we're being technical. Yeah. yeah. I don't know anything about numbers, but I do know that's not a novel. Okay. Well, it, it, in that situation, violence that seemed to be the answer. You know, it's usually not the answer, but in that case, violence won. So don't don't lead with violence, but violence won in that case. All right, number sixteen. What geometry term is defined as a straight line or plane that touches a curve or curved surface? <laughs> Be careful with Mr. Gibbs. Tangent. Tangent is correct. <laughs> Most of you don't know that uh, knocking over Mr. Gibbs was on Jonathan's bucket list. So, <laughs> congratulations, you've achieved a dream. Seems to be effective so far. They've, got, they've gotten two right answers on that move. All right. Number 17. How many, mom, how many members are in the musical group Fifth Harmony? I don't, I don't know. Whatever. Well, I guess whatever day the questions were printed. So which, what's the answer? Four. Four is correct, yes. Oh, it's anyone's game. <laughs> yeah, some one of them could have quit in the interim. But uh, there's three questions left. It's anybody's game. Here we are. 18. Which football team had the biggest scoring comeback in the history of the Super <laughs> Teachers? The Patriots are correct. Yes. All right. Oh, so they get it. Yeah, students need both of these. Okay. So you guys need both of these to tie. Two questions left. All right. They're younger, though. <laughs> That's true. All right. Number 19. What state adjacent to the Gulf of Mexico was named after a French king? Louisiana, Louisiana is correct. All right. Yeah, we'll make this one worth four points. I'm waiting for the judges. This is like uh, this is like Quidditch when they play the whole game and it doesn't really matter. It's just you get the yeah. All right, this is really surprising. Nobody could see this coming, but the the last question is worth three points. Okay, that's a shock to me. Okay, goes against all of the the ethics that Quiz Bowl is known for. That spits in the face of that. Um, but, all right, well, there also seems to be a little, a little girl over there with the seniors. Hey, that's, that's, that's all right, right? Like a Doogie Hauser, not that, you know. See, I got to laugh from the adults. Thank you, thank you. The other people are like, who's Doogie Hauser? All right. question I, I can't I just saw the I just got I, I hate this guy. All right, number 20. What is the first line of the 2015 hit Uptown Funk? The first line. You did it the first line. <laughs> Seniors? Correct! 
right? <laughs> Judges? Please don't sing that song anymore. It's, it's horrible enough as it is. I don't like it. All right, we have a tiebreaker. The bonus question is, what number is Miss Fecto thinking of? She wrote it down. <laughs> what is it between? It's between one and 50. 26. 12. One, three, is more of a, a BHS event type trivia. The bonus question is what event is occurring this Monday night at 9 Wallace Street? That is correct. So, yes, it is uh, 9 Wallace Street in Beverly, Monday night, April 2nd. Uh, it is benefiting uh, hurricane victims in Puerto Rico. It is presented by the Student Council. Uh, it's going to be a night of entertainment uh, at 6 o'clock there. So uh, some of your classmates will be performing different things. Some of your teachers will be. Ms. Vecto and I are doing a duet. You know, thank you. Thank you for the, thank you for the back. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right, so, uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you for coming, and uh, students win. All right, thank you. It's kind of like the pep rally where the seniors magically win. The seniors!